Hello, hello, hello there, everybody. Second day here in this chair. Hello to all those that are new. My name is Deshaun. I'm going to be your host. Thank you very much for joining us there. Who wants to be a millionaire trivia? A show that has touched more than 130 countries and will continue doing so. So, ladies and gents, thank you very much for joining us here. Don't worry. There's about a half a minute before we're going to get the party started. We're going to dive into 15 questions. If you manage to answer everything right, you qualify for a prize pool of $1,500. Share it across all the winners to help you during this process as there are the questions. Some of them are kind of tricky, to say the least. There will be two lifelines, 50-50 and, well, as the audience. 50-50, as the name implies, removes two of the worst options, leaving only the correct answer and one wrong one. So 50-50, chance indeed. And of course, as the audience, you'll be able to see what the other people have hedged their bets upon it and then join the crowd or go against the grain. Up for you, ladies and gents. Hello, hello there, ladies and gents. It seems like we're getting more people than yesterday. Amazing. Well, just a few more seconds, ladies and gents, and we're going to dive into the first question. Hopefully an easy start and then plowing through everything what's remaining. So, ladies and gents, hope you're really ready. Now, let's put on those thinking hats on, ladies and gents. Best of luck to you all out there. I will remind you regarding those lifelines along the way, so just in case, you do not get extra points if you save them till the end. So, first question as follows. So, which princess lived with seven dwarves? Jasmine, Snow White, Cinderella, or Pocahontas? So, which of these four, A, B, C, or D, Jasmine, Snow White, Cinderella, or Pocahontas, lived with seven dwarves? And I do note, not the newest version Netflix, you know? Just like the, not the newest version of Isaac Newton as well. The old, good old stuff, you know? So, ladies and gentlemen, the correct answer for this question is Snow White. Seems like the vast majority of you do remember the good old times of Disney indeed, and have seen the movies, or at least heard the stories. Second question, let's go. Athens is capital of which country? Italy, Spain, Greece, or France? Well, a little bit of geography test there, ladies and gentlemen, an easy one. Athens, definitely one of the most well-known, also in nowadays and before. So, the correct answer, ladies and gentlemen, for this quite simple and straightforward question, A, B, C, or D, hopefully you're locked into that answer, and the right one is, yet of course, yield the Greece, ladies and gents. Congratulations. Seems like this one was just as easy as the first one, but it does get tougher, so don't forget to use those lifelines when it comes to the hand. Third one. What is the name of fruit which, uh, with a translucent white flesh and inedible shell? Answer A, lychee. Answer B, guava. Answer C, gooseberry. Or answer D, watermelon. So translucent white flesh is the giveaway, ladies and gents. If you know a couple of these, you can probably, well... Exclude a couple of options and come to the right one. But which is the right one, ladies and gents, for you to know? Light cheese, indeed, ladies and gents. Watermelon, yes, but not translucent flesh. Gooseberry, definitely not hard outer shell. And guava, not exactly translucent. Moving on. Which of these was a Beatles hit? Ticket to ride, ticket to fly, ticket to travel, or ticket to haven? And I do believe the song, which they are famous for and was a hit, was made in... 1965, ladies and gentlemen, that rings a bell, and if you're old enough to remember those good old times, but maybe you just enjoy some good, good old music. So, let's get to the bottom of this. Correct answer for this question, ladies and gentlemen, is a ticket to ride. Seems like this one was a, one of the stumbling blocks, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget to use those lifelines. All right, moving on, ladies and gentlemen, with the fifth one, third way down. What is the name of person who controls an orchestra? Chef, conductor, driver, or boss? Definitely boss, but that is more metaphorically, so maybe we can exclude that one. That's so much as I can give away, ladies and gentlemen, not spilling all the beans. For you, you need to decide. So, made your choice, locked in, final decision, good. Let's find out the correct answer. For this question, ladies and gentlemen, the fifth one, the correct answer is conductor. Seems like this one was the easiest of them all, ladies and gentlemen. Well done, sharp-minded people out there. Well, then let's keep plowing. Ten more questions and we're at the prize pool, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get into it. Let's see if it doesn't get harder or easier. Definitely not easier, though. Sixth one. What name is given to the 55th an wedding anniversary? Platinum, a ruby, sapphire, or emerald? So, ladies and gents, for those of you who have survived so long time in these kind of relationships, my hat's off to you. But, more importantly, regarding the question, how is it called, the 55th anniversary? It's the platinum, ruby, sapphire, or emerald? Ladies and gentlemen, the correct answer is emerald. 
Congratulations. This one was a tough one indeed, ladies and gentlemen, because I don't believe we have a lot of people out there who have witnessed this event. Moving on, seventh one. Los Angeles is the largest city in which United States? California, Washington, Texas, or Florida? So which of these, where Los Angeles is located, and which of the states in America's, ladies and gentlemen? Answer A, California, B, Washington, C, Texas, or D, Florida? And uh, we do hear a lot of crazy stories from that place. Hopefully you know the place. Ladies and gentlemen, the correct answer for this seventh question is California. So is what is there. I would have gone with Florida. There's alternative out there, but uh, seems like everybody was right on point with this one. Moving on with eighth one. Which language was spoken in ancient Rome? Sanskrit, Farsi, Latin, Tamil. So, ladies and gentlemen, a couple of these are closer to Asian parts, but one that is well known in Europe as well is connected with ancient Rome. Probably a dead giveaway, or maybe I've said too much already. Well, the correct answer, ladies and gentlemen, for this correct answer, well, for the eighth one, is Latin. Compliments, ladies and gents. All the other ones, Sanskrit and Farsi, I do believe, are closer to uh, India. And Tamil, Middle East? Correct me if I'm wrong. Moving on, ninth one. Which United States public holiday falls on November 11th? Arbor Day, Labor Day, Veterans Day, or Memorial Day? Now, ladies and gents, a little bit of history things. Those of you who knew, 11th November was not too far ago. Hopefully you kept a keen eye and kept attention. Final seconds, ladies and gents. The answer has been locked in, A, B, C, or D. Good. Correct one for the ninth one is the Veterans Day, ladies and gents. Seems like this one was a stumbling bog there as well, but seems like most of you still scored. Five more to go, ladies and gents. We're at the 10th question. Good luck. Which pureed fruit is traditional ingredient in Bellini cocktail? Apple, peach, pear, or orange? So, Bellini cocktail, ladies and gents, using which pureed fruit? The answer A for apple, B for peach, C for pear, or D for orange. And actually, as I read the ingredients, I will need to try it out. I've never tried this one. It sounds fairly delicious. But regarding the pureed fruit, it is peach indeed, ladies and gents. Comments, looks like there are some, some people who enjoy some fine drinks. Let's keep moving, ladies and gents. Just a few more questions and you're at the prize pool. Don't forget about those lifelines, though. Do use them. So, the 11th, what's in store for us? Which Nintendo 64 game's final boss is called Master Hand? Super Smash Bros, Banjo, Kazooie, Perfect Dark, or Contra? Now, I did play a little bit of Nintendo 64. Maybe if you're a true gaming fan, you know this one and have played it yourself. It's one of the classics, ladies and gents. But, correct answer for this question, ladies and gents, lies in the one and only A, Super Smash Bros. Looks like this one was uh, just as tough as the last one, ladies and gentlemen, but just four more questions and you're at the finish line, so keep it together. Which African mammal has species called bushels and grivies? Antelope, hyena, coyote, or zebra? Didn't know this one, ladies and gents. You're all by yourself there, so if you still have lifelines, well, put them to use. Put them to use. Lock in that answer, ladies and gents. Final decision, right? Very good. So, correct answer for this 12th question, ladies and gents, is zebras. Congratulations, tough one indeed. Also one of those animals that we cannot ride, even though people have tried, just like with mooses. 13th one, good luck. Which of these occupations was Lily Allen considering before becoming famous? Doctor, dentist, nurse, or florist? Kind of interesting past that I did a little bit of reading upon Lily Allen's life, ladies and gents. And uh, probably you will not expect this one, but it does have some connections with horticulture, if you know what that means. So, the answer locked in? Good. Let's find out the correct one. Ladies and gentlemen, the correct answer for the 13th question is florist. I got surprised there as well. Lily Allen has been through some tough times. Two more left to go, ladies and gentlemen. Two more left to go. So, the penultimate question. She bangs the drums and I want to be adored. Ah, uh, the songs by which English band? The Stone Roses, New Order, The Charlatans, or Oasis. Now, one of these is connected with Wonderwall, so maybe that one isn't it. That's as much as I can help you, ladies and gents. For the English folks out there, hopefully you do know the right answer. Well, all right, ladies and gents. Correct answer for this penultimate question is The Stone Roses. Comments, comments, yes. Oasis is connected with Wonderwall, but the other three I didn't know nothing about. So, red herring, perhaps. Fifteenth and final question, ladies and gents. Best of luck out there. This is for all the golden glory. 
In which century was the composer George Frederick Handel born? 16th century, 17th century, 18th century, or 19th century? And I like how we're getting the 18th century a lowercase letter. Well, is it the right answer or not? Up for you to decide, ladies and gents. Well then, let's get to the bottom of it. Ladies and gents, the 17th century is the correct answer. Congratulations out there. Looks like we started with almost 1,800 people, but barely, barely 594 have survived. Congratulations, ladies and gents, to all the glorious and wise people out there who scored on this round, teasing your brain and filling your pockets. Well done. And of course, ladies and gents, there will be more games available right in front of me where you can check out more millionaire options. Millionaire roulette or millionaire poker is a thing. So thank you very much for participating, ladies and gents. There will be more trivia coming up soon, so stay tuned. Drop by. It only takes about 5-10 minutes to get a little bit more extra fun. So with that being said, ladies and gents, thank you very much for joining us here tonight with me, D. Sean. I will be back, though I do believe, for one more time at least. There will be other hosts joining here. So thank you very much for joining us here, ladies and gents. Wish you a good evening. Have a good weekend. Until the next time.